Hello, I want to tell you a story about Frein Salak. He's a Croatian man that many people consider to be the luckiest man to ever live. He survived seven near-death experiences. One of them happened at the age of 33. He was going to visit his sick mother, his very first time flying. The flight was completely booked, but he was able to talk the airline into letting him sit in the back with the flight attendants. A tragedy happened during the flight. As the plane was going, the door came off. A flight attendant was thrown from the plane. Frain was thrown from the plane. The plane eventually crashed, killing everyone on board, and the flight attendant plummeted to her death. But miraculously, Frain landed in a haystack and lived. Later in Frain's life, he was in another incident. He was riding on a train going over a bridge. The train derailed and crashed into a frozen river. Frain was able to escape out of the window, surviving with just a broken arm and some bruises. He was in five other near-death experiences. Later in his life, Frain won the Croatian lottery. $1.1 million. Was he the luckiest man alive? Was he the unluckiest man alive? Frain Salak. A lot of us know people that everything seems to go their way. What I want to talk to you about today is that a lot of times it's not luck. It's not that things are coming into our life. It's that you're not noticing the opportunities that are presenting themselves. There are a lot of things that are happening in the world that you're missing. Let me give you an example. Have you ever went to shop for a new car? Let's say you're buying a Honda Civic. You start to research it. You're comparing prices. You're shopping around. Then all of a sudden you notice, hey, there's Honda Civics everywhere. Look at all these Honda Civics. It's not that they weren't there before. It's just that you weren't focused on them. They were always there, but you weren't focused. You weren't paying attention to them. Did you ever stop to think that that means that there are dozens of other cars that you aren't noticing? And that there also may be many things going on around the world that you aren't noticing. And that is the case because our mind gets presented 11 million bits of information per second. 11 million bits of information per second. But MIT research tells us that our, pro our conscious attention can only process 60 bits per second. So you're getting 11 million bits in, and you can only process 60 bits per second. So there's a lot of the world that you're missing. There's actually most of the world that you're missing. If you think about it, that actually means that you're capturing almost none of what's going on in the world. The way it works is our brain has what's called a reticular activating system. This is a part of our brain, or part of our body, that filters out information coming to our brain. It filters out images, sounds, smells, tastes, and it filters them out from reaching our brain because we go crazy trying to process 11 million bits of information per second. But what it lets in has to do with what you're focusing on. It also lets in things related to your safety, Things related to goals you're trying to achieve and obstacles to those goals. Also things related to beliefs that you have. These are the things that it lets into your brain. So much of the world you aren't getting into, you aren't processing. Let me give you an example. Look around the room you're in now. Take a look around in the room you're in. Notice everything red. Look for everything red in the room that you're in right now. Everything red in the room. What I want you to do now is to list out in your mind everything white in the room you're in. Think about everything white that's in the room you're in. Now if you look around again, you'll notice there are things that are white that you didn't notice the first time you looked because you were focused on red. So if we're focused on the red things, we're going to miss the white things. That's how focus works. Focus means that you're blinded to everything else in the world. And that's how it has to be. It also works that way with your negative self-talk. So if you're telling yourself, I can never lose weight. If you're telling yourself, hey, I'm always late. Then your mind is going to present information to support that belief. It's going to present information to support that belief. And it's sort of a cycle. 
So if you have a belief, your mind is going to let information to support that belief, but now it's going to strengthen that belief. But that's also going to make you filter out information that contradicts that belief. And it's a vicious cycle. That's why you can have two people with completely different political beliefs and neither of them can understand why the other person can be so stupid and not see it their way. So what can we do about this? How can we change our focus? I want to give you three practical tips. Number one, every morning when you wake up, I want you to think of five things that you're thankful for. Five things you're thankful for. Now these can be small things like the fact that you woke up or the fact that you're going to have dinner today. Or the fact that our country isn't at war right now. You know, just five things that you're thankful for. What this will do is this will train your mind to look for things to be thankful for versus looking for things to complain about. Number two, change the questions you ask yourself. So instead of asking yourself, ooh, I wonder what crazy thing my boss is going to do today. Or ooh, I wonder how long this boring meeting is going to be. Instead of asking yourself negative questions, Ask yourself questions like, I wonder who's going to appreciate the hard work I've done today. Or ask yourself, I wonder what new and inspiring thing I'm going to learn today. And at night, when you go to sleep, ask yourself some lofty questions. Ask yourself, why does everyone really like me? Ask yourself, why am I so successful? And as you sleep, your mind will find answers to this and present it to your unconscious mind. And therefore, it'll change your perspective. Number three, how many times do you think you look at your phone every day? Research tells us that we look at our phone 110 times per day. So that's over 100 times per day you're looking at your initial screen, your lock screen. So whatever is on your lock screen, you're seeing 100 times per day. So what you can do is you can change that lock screen to be a goal that you want to achieve or to be something you want to focus on. And therefore, you're presenting it to yourself a hundred times per day, programming your own mind. If you change your focus, you change your reality. If you change your focus, you change your future. So the way you know that it's working is you'll start to see coincidences. You'll happen to run into somebody who has an opportunity for you. You happen across the website that provides you the information that you need it. You change your focus, you'll change your future. So the three steps I want you to take are number one, think of five things every morning that you're thankful for. Number two, change the questions you're asking yourself. And number three, change your lock screen. If you change your focus, you'll change your future.